YouTube, it's Justin, AK Demonic Sweaters. Today, we're gonna be talking about multi-temporal MIDI. What is multi-temporal MIDI, you may be asking? Uh, well, let's talk about that. Um, what I'm holding in my hand right here is a old digital 1980s synthesizer. It looks like a weird uh, spaceship console or something like that. But uh, this is really the Kawai K1M, which is one of my favorite synths. Uh, that was ever made. I think it's probably my favorite synth ever made. I always say that, but it is. Um, and this thing is really cool. Um, they made several versions of this. They made one with a keyboard attached and a rack mountable version. This one right here is the tabletop module version. And uh, the reason why I wanted to use this is it actually has the ability to work in multi-timbral mode. Now, you may be asking what exactly that means. And uh, some of you might already know, but if you don't, um, the easiest way to understand this is imagine you have a multi-track recording of audio. Uh, say you have an audio recording of one channel of drums, and then you have a channel of guitar, and a channel of bass, channel of vocals, keyboard, and all of that, etc. And you can, you know, mix these and make a song out of all these different instruments. Now, a multi-timbral synth uh, has the ability to play more than one sound at a time. This particular synth can play eight different sounds at a time. And the way this works with MIDI is MIDI has different channels that it sends out through a MIDI cable, uh, which is something like this. And each, all of that information, uh, the note, velocity, pitch, speed, uh, tempo, all of that stuff, as well as the channel gets sent through this cable and will go to my Kawai K1 telling it what to play and we can create basically an entire song on this thing. And I'm gonna be doing this today using Linux. I'm using elementary OS, and uh, we're gonna go in there to a program called Seek24, and we're gonna play around with some multi-temporal MIDI, so here we go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is actually create a multi-temporal patch on the K1, uh, which you can see down here. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. I know the screen is a little bit difficult to see just because it's fluorescent green and the rest of the, the synth is black. So uh, I'll try to describe what I'm seeing there if you can't see it uh, so well. Uh, but basically what I'm gonna do is I have to go into the multi section of the synthesizer, which is by using this button right here and then selecting any one of these patches and then I could edit one of these patches to make it uh, basically uh, do what I wanna do. Basically what I mean is assign different patches to different channels within the synthesizer. So first I have to do that. Right now if I just play my uh, synth. This is like the default, uh, what multi-patch that's on there right now, uh, star choir. Uh, but I don't think that will work as is. I probably have to edit it a little bit. Also, um, I could mention here, uh, what I have as far as Jack, I'm just using the Jack audio connection kit. And right now we're mostly concerned with the MIDI section, which is, uh, uh, kind of strangely in the also section of uh, Jack Audio Connection Kit. Now, there is another way. This is a little off topic, but if I were using Jack for MIDI, it would be listed right here, but I'm actually using something called Alsa Sequencer. Um, this is something actually I should make a video on because uh, even that name, Alsa Sequencer, is incredibly confusing uh, if you're used to working with MIDI or even if you're not, if you're just learning it, the fact that they call it a sequencer uh, when it's not a sequencer at all, it's actually a patch bay. Uh, for MIDI, and that's what I'm using. And Jack uh, Audio Connection Kit has the ability to use also for MIDI, as well as Jack for MIDI, which it just calls MIDI. And over here we have audio. But uh, like I said, I should just make a video on that totally because it really needs one. I, and I did a pretty good job explaining it right there, but I'm sure some people will just search for that term. Anyway, let's get to it here. So I want to make a patch uh, that's going to use at least four channels of MIDI. I don't think I'll do all eight because I don't think I'm going to make that complicated of a, a part, but I do want to make a couple sequences with some multiple instruments. So uh, let's see what I can do. I might be silent on the mic here for a little bit while I'm just playing with this, but I'm going to do my best to keep you guys updated what's going on. All right, so first I have to press edit, and then if I can remember how to do this, So basically here is where you can select the different patches uh, to be on each channel. As you can see right here, actually, I don't know if you can see that at all. Let me try to pull this closer to the screen or to the camera. 
Yeah, I don't know if you can see that at all. But anyway, what it says on here is single, and then one, one, and then it has all these blank spaces. And so what I could do is all those blank spaces actually represent MIDI channels. And right now there's just two being used, and both of them are set to one, or spa two patches rather being used, and both of, of them are set to the first MIDI channel. So I could assign each one of these a voice, and then assign it a MIDI channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now I have five different, or sorry, four different patches selected on four different MIDI channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this patch. And I didn't really listen to them because uh, I just wanna do an example, but we'll find out what they sound like here in a minute. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and open up Seek 24. Okay. Now, Seek 24, the first time you ever see it, if you've never used it before, when you first open it up, you're like, what in God's name is this? Uh, <laughs> it seems very confusing, but it's actually not. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite easy to use. So the first thing we're going to do is just right click in one of these little boxes. And we're going to go new. And this opens up a little sequence that we can start working with. Okay, and now we're going to assign our MIDI out. We're going to put that on MIDI cable because that's the cable that's attached to the um, K1. And then we're going to select our MIDI channel, which is already selected as number one. And then if we just start doing stuff there, you'll hear number one gets triggered. If we switch this to two, so now you can hear the other MIDI instrument. Now let's go to three. Wow, that one's loud. Okay, so I can adjust that on the K1 itself. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with this uh, kind of bassy sound as our uh, first part. And what I'm going to do is actually just... Actually, I'm not even going to use my keyboard. I'm just going to draw stuff in here with the piano uh, editor. Let's just go ahead and do this. Good enough for an example. So let's just close that. Let's open up another one. We'll leave this one on channel one. Let's turn it on so we can hear it. our note length a little bit so let's go to one eighth eighth note yeah i think that could definitely be longer so let's create the length or make the length a little bit longer let's go forget how to do this that off for now until uh actually let's just skip that one i don't want to have to mess with it let's just go to number 
Well, we already did number four, didn't we? Let's see. Did three, one, two, three. Oh, we didn't do... What's this one? That one's number one. Number four, so we didn't do three yet. Or two. So let's put this on two. So now I've already made a multi-timbral sequence, and it's really irritating, <laughs> but uh, we could turn things on and off, and you can hear the individual parts. And that's pretty much how you do it. You know, I could obviously do something much better than this and much more uh, complicated and up to eight different channels with this particular synth. Now, other synths may have even more. Some will do up to 16 or even more than that. Uh, but you are limited to 16 MIDI channels being sent uh, through the cable at a time. So, um, yeah. But that's pretty much it. It's not really that complicated once you get the hang of it. Seek, one, Seek 24 is actually a really cool program. You can do uh, more with it than I'm, what, I, what I'm showing you right here. It also has a very basic song editor. So I could draw in like different patterns here. Like this is the first pattern that I have up here. And then I could draw in more down here and et cetera. And then if I play this, it'll play through those sequences in that order. Um, so it's a really cool program, um, especially for, I love it for using hardware, like external MIDI hardware. Uh, you can do quite a bit with it. You can also record uh, straight from the MIDI controller. You don't have to type it in the uh, piano roll editor editor like I did there. Um, but yeah, it's really cool, really flexible, uh, a lot of fun to play with. You can even combine it, like say you have, you know, I'm using hardware there. I could even combine it with a uh, software synth. Well, I could show you, let's see, let's do Jack uh, or the plugin pack, the CAF plugin pack. And let's add plugin, let's go to instrument. Let's put in the mono synth here, and then that should be, oh, see, this one's showing up. Well, this isn't going to work. Uh, I'd have to reconfigure some stuff. See, this one's actually showing up in the jack MIDI, um, so I'd have to reconfigure my MIDI to be using that uh, rather than uh, using uh, the also MIDI sequencer, but I'm not going to do that right now, but you could uh, theoretically use software synths and hardware synths together very easily in Seek 24 uh, using Jack and just connect them all together here. It's a lot of fun to work with. I make a lot of music this way, or I have in the past. Uh, I still do sometimes as well. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> yeah, it's fun for me. I like doing this stuff and uh, hopefully you guys learned something. And if you did, feel free to click like, subscribe, click the little bell icon if you want to see more videos by me. And uh, be sure to check out my links. If you want to uh, check out an album I did, there's one called Manasota self-titled release it's on 180 gram vinyl and i think it's pretty darn good you can check that out with a link uh where is it over there or down below or wherever they go um so anyway thanks for watching everybody have a good day